Welcome to Be Advised, Leading with Value with Brad Swinehart. In this podcast, we will focus on successful marketing methods for advisors that generate prospects and clients. We will learn from the best in the industry on how advisors in the trenches today are growing their practices. Join us for this journey where Brad draws from years of expertise and guest experts to help advisors reach their full potential. This podcast is brought to you by White Gloves Podcast Connect Program, a done-for-you, fully integrated podcasting system that will help you keep in touch with all of your leads. If you seek more clarity and confidence to build your business, Brad Swinehart has a guest for you. Machen McDonald has been working with advisors and entrepreneurs to refine their processes, habits, and action plans. And the results? Well, Brad, why don't you ask Machen about that? Machen, thanks so much for being on the show. Happy to get this going with you. Yeah, man, I've been looking forward to this. This is going to be great. And you and I, have uh, I don't think we've ever met in person, but we've fostered a pretty great virtual relationship over the years doing you know, some value-add stuff and just thought leadership with advisors. And I've always appreciated your insight into the industry and the advisor's practices. So let's kind of dive right in and, and tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you're working today and, and why what you have to say is important. Well, yeah, thanks for that. You know, I'll go back to 1989, which is when I got into the financial services business. I started with a company called Mutual of New York, later became the Money Group, and then AXA bought them. And now we know AXA is equitable. So a lot of evolution there. But uh, basically, I was a registered rep and life insurance guy that did retirement planning. And uh you know, if you know anything with a career agency shop, you have any modicum of success. The first thing they do is they pull you into sales management. Uh, after my second year, I got tapped on the shoulder to do that and uh, was running a, um, a sales unit in San Francisco and then had some success with that and got tapped on the shoulder from our home office to help other uh, financial advisors basically at that time, take the shrink wrap off the binders of the training programs and the marketing programs. I was just kind of that oddball that actually took what the home office created and put it in into action. And, um, got some good success with it. So I went around and I helped other advisors, other producers with their business plans and marketing plans and kind of hold them accountable to it. It morphed into kind of a coaching position inside the company and had a lot of success with that. And then in 2004, when our company was acquired, they were trying to figure out what to do with this guy in California and wanted him to move out to uh, either New York or, or Georgia. And I'm um, born and raised fourth generation California person. And I just said, you know what? I don't know that this will make sense for me. And right at that time, my phone started to blow up with other um, managers and producers that had moved to other companies and said, hey, can you do for us what you were doing for us over there? And I said, yeah, I think I probably could do that. And that was kind of the birth of my current company, Pro Brilliance Leadership Institute. So the, the way that I'm coining it these days is we help you bring forth your A game to your hero's journey of growing your practice. And I love that. That's not something that you thought, hey, maybe I can do this and sell it and make a living out of it. Let's try. Instead, it was almost forced upon you of, Hey, you're really good at this. Can we pay you to do it? And that's probably, <laughs> that's probably the best way to start a business, right? Is when people proactively reach out to you and say, Hey, you're really great at this. Can you help us? Yeah. It, it, and it was a blessing, you know, I mean, income wise and all that, it was basically like a lateral move from where I was and it's continued to grow from there. I've been blessed. I've got great people that I get to work with on this and, um, yeah, it's, you know, and not, not to say that there hasn't been struggles in growing the business that there is like in any business. And, and I kind of kid people, I say, I'm either riding the wave, you know, life's pretty good, or I'm paddling like hell to catch the wave, or I'm getting crushed by it. And uh, I, I've been crushed before. And that's where, you know, the deep learning comes from and, and the recalibration versus the celebration. So uh, yeah, it's all just part of the cycle. And I think the more willing we are to endure that cycle, the stronger we become. One of my favorite quotes is by uh, Pema Chodron, who says, only to the extent that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation can that which is indestructible in us be found. So if we're willing to burn off the impurities, uh, we can let the gold shine. 
Oh, I love that. That's going to be a quote cool meme for sure. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the, some of the common issues that you're running into when, when you're speaking with advisors, you're helping them, they're, they're reaching out to you. What is the, what's probably the number one thing that an advisor will, will reach out to you and say, Hey, I need, I need help with X. Yeah, that's a great question. Most advisors think they need help with uh, things like social media or marketing or, or webinars and moving into this blended world of prospecting, you know, both virtually and online. What they really are wanting is more confidence, pure and simple. You, you show me a, an advisor who's struggling at prospects, you know, doesn't have enough prospects and it's, it's a confidence problem, pure and simple. And it's basically just helping them find their mojo and borrowing brilliance from other areas of their life, getting a plan that they can look at that will give them some confidence and then holding them accountable and watching their self-efficacy grow. And it's not to say that it's people that aren't uh, doing well in business. A lot of times uh, I've, I've had advisors, you know, teams of advisors that are doing really, really well. And then there's this shift, you know, or this thing called the pandemic or COVID, right? Knocks them on their tail, but they're, but they're, you know, they can be very successful in camping out at uh, a nice level of production. And what happens, what I find for most advisors or even any business owners, when they're camping out, they tend to lose some courage. And then it comes to this point where, uh Oh, I got to ramp up. We've got to make this climb to get to this next plateau. And they don't have the courage that they had when they were younger, when they were trying to figure it out. So a lot of what we do is kind of help them really strap on the armor again and find the courage and take their business to the next level. And one of the ways that that might look is just with the technology, you know, a lot of them, uh, for, as an example, I have one advisor out in the Kansas area and they used to go into schools and do the, the um, presentations in the schools for the 403B plans that they have. And, you know, that basically got shut out and it was like, uh oh, what do we do now? And then it was just a matter of getting the technology. So now their whole office is outfitted with these huge screens that they can write on and interact with their clients with virtually. And, you know, as things are kind of opening up again, you know, people are starting to come back into the office, but now it's a hybrid of the two but it was a bit daunting for them. You know, it's like, uh-oh, we don't really know this technology. What do we do? How do we do this? And now it's an afterthought. Well, it's, that's interesting too. Let's take a couple steps back and, and kind of dissect what you were saying there is that, you know, an advisor, because you're, you're typically working with an advisor that's more established, maybe been in the year, what, been in the business, maybe five to 10 years. It's all over the board, actually. There's, you know, interestingly enough, there's a lot of advisors that are coming into the business and they don't really have any guidance. You know, when I came into the business, I was with a career shop and there was a training program and a, a manager that would do joint work with you and, and people in the office that you could glean information from. But there's a lot of people that are, you know, they, they get their licenses and they're solo and they don't really have any much support or they don't know where to find the support. So part of my clientele, I'm kind of like a glorified sales manager and just helping them get clear on what numbers they need to hit each week and how to go get prospects and how to open up a conversation, open up a case, get some facts, come back, do a case. So it, it can be that level of it. And then there's other places where people are established and it's just a matter of bringing forth their best strategic thinking to get to that next level. That's great. Cause there's, there's probably two different mentalities there, right? Like one is establishing yourself as a, as a professional and learning, like what KPIs do you need to hit? What tracking do you need to implement? What do you need to do to really see success and identifying those? And then what's very interesting to me is the, you know, what you were talking about where they've hit a plateau. And I, and I think that's just not, you know, human nature is when you are, starting out when you're fresh, when you're hungry, if you will, that you're going to fight and fight and fight until you hit that, that first, you know, oh, I made it moment. And then, you know, you remember those things, you have your battle scars, you have that, you know, Oh, that was a lot of work. And I thought it was very interesting how you phrase that of, you know, strapping that armor, armor back on to keep growing your business. I think that does take a lot of courage and advisors just in their 
natural state are entrepreneurial. They're, they're, uh, they want to get out there and, and build, build, build. Uh, but once you feel like you've built something, how do you push that to the next level? So what would, let's talk about that. When a, when an advisor comes to you, they say, you know what, I feel like I'm, I'm stuck at this plateau. You know, what do I do for the, the next phase of my business? You know, let, let's start there. What, what's your take on that? That's a great question, Brad. The, the question that I ask them is, are they willing to transfer and what's at risk if they get to this next level that they want. And, you know, most people will say, oh, there is no risk. It would be great. You know, I'd have this, I'd have that and that. Well, the bottom line is consciously or unconsciously, they're associating some kind of a risk to that next level. And oftentimes it's unconscious. It's a current self-concept of who they think they are and also who they think they're not. It keeps them where they are. So a lot of it is kind of opening up the hatch, looking under the hood and untangling some of the old wiring that's keeping them where they currently are, how they see themselves, how they see the world, the industry, their clients and their products and services, and then looking beyond, looking out into the future, right? We all know uh, the strategic coach, Dan Sullivan, he has a great question, the R factor question, which you know, we borrow that. And that is if we were sitting here working together three, five years from today, looking back on now, what has to happen in order for you to feel happy, underscore the word happy about the progress you've made both personally and professionally, and then just let them talk. And they start to paint that picture of what their future can look like. And then we come back to now and, and we use the word aware, but it's spelled A-W-H-E-R-E, aware. And that's the first point. It's like, you know, if you're in Disneyland or Disney World, it says you are here. There's that little mark. So we've got to find out where they are currently, mentally, emotionally, physically, professionally, and then where do they want to get to? And then we help them create the roadmap based upon their best strategic thinking. And we just have a way to pull that out of people. Let me open up that spaghetti mess of wires that got them to where they're at, right? And we at White Club, we 100% understand that, right? Because we we were bubble gums and shoestrings and bootstraps from the basement up to the 130 people that we employ now. And it's, I mean, you build things out of necessity, and then you know years go by, and they're they're just still there because that's how that's how you got there, and you you know, it takes a conscious effort to go back and deconstruct and rebuild something that's more efficient, more, more scalable. What is the most common you're, you're pulling these advisors practices apart and looking, what is the most common thing that's holding an advisor back from growth? Oh, it's a hundred percent mindset period. And what is that mindset that you're seeing that says, is it just complacency or is it fear or is it, I mean, what is that mindset that says, no, I can't grow, or this is what's pulling, pulling me away. Well, it's what I call a fad, which is fear, anxiety, and doubt. And it's that voice that we all have. And if there's anybody listening that says, I don't have that voice, that's the voice we're talking about. There's this wise part of all of us, right? I'm 58 years old. I've got 58 years on this planet. I've got some wisdom and experience as a result of that, from that place of wisdom, and we all have it, if we could block away the doubts, the fears, the anxieties, and just operate from that place, we do nothing but exponentially grow. However, there's times where we've had experiences in our life where things didn't go according to plan, and we form these warning signs and we drag those warning signs with us along our lifetime. And they sound like being safe, you know, playing safe, not being too risky, things of that nature. So we, what we do is we listen for those limiting voices or those limiting statements. And we just call it out. We say, well, you know, do you know that to be true? And if they really are honest, they're like, well, maybe not always. Okay, great. So how do you react when you believe that thought to be true? Oh, well, I, I play small. I hold back. I don't make that prospecting call. I don't try to get into that market. Okay, well, let's set that aside for a moment and 
if we could just access this level 10 wisdom that you have, what would you do differently? And they go, oh, well, I do this. Okay, great. Let's put that in the plan. Let's do that. And then when they get scared or freaked out when it's time to do that, and they come up with 46 excuses as to why they don't have the time to do it. That's where we call them out. We hold them accountable. We, you know, sometimes we've got to hold their hand across the river. We've been across this river a gazillion times. We know where to step, where not to step. They may not know. We help them. I feel like, you know, every, and maybe it's not everyone, but I for sure have it. You wake up in the morning, you're, you're feeling rare and to go, you have maybe too much caffeine in you from the second pot of coffee. And you just, you have all these great ideas and these, um, these grandiose plans of how to, how to move forward, how to grow, how to create, invent, be better. And then you let the day almost chip away at you as your daily grind and, there's you, like you just said, there's so many reasons that, that get in the way of, well, let's not do that. And let's not do that. And I mean, we see the same thing at, at white glove when we're doing, you know, advisors doing seminars, if they are not used to doing seminars, you know, there's two mindsets of advisors that work with us. One, I'm going to test this and see how it works. And then the other is, I know that this can work. I'm going to make it work for me. And the first set of advisors says, I'm going to test this and see if it works. You're going to get 50, 50. If, if those guys are successful at seminars, maybe, maybe even less than that. Right. Because the first time you get up in front of an audience and speak, the first time you do any sort of new process, it's tough and you're not going to be great at it. And if you don't knock it out of the park or, or luck into a, a great client off your first seminar, you're going to turn around and say, Hey, seminars don't, work. I'm obviously great, but seminars don't work. Let's move on try something else where that opposite mindset that says, I know every successful advisor I talk to has done seminars, does seminars. It's part of their practice. I'm going to figure out how to do that. And I am going to get good at it. Those advisors, they're crushing it. Those are the 15 to one ROI stories you hear, the 23 to one ROI stories that you hear is those, that mindset is the difference though. It's not the seminar. The seminar is not any different. It's not the audience. It's not the marketing. The difference is that mindset. So I 100% agree with you that that is the one thing that holds holds people back in any line of work is a mindset that, yes, this can be successful and I'm going to do what it takes to make it successful. Yeah. There, there's a great meme that I've seen recently to that effect where it says, be brave enough to suck at something when you start. And it's it's true. It's the mindset of like, hey, I may not be great at this in the beginning. But I know I'm going to have to practice it and get better at it. And I will get better at it as I go along. And if you can just step into that, that's huge. And that's the mindset that's needed. Absolutely. So let's talk about a real case study that you've done. You've worked with an advisor that were struggling with X. You guys did Y, and this is where they're at with Z. It's somebody's, we, w- one of the things we do is we look at their calendar and we look back over the last 90 days, what their activities looked like. And we'll see that, you know, maybe they had six appointments a week or, or, whatever it is. And we'll look at, you know, how much money do they want to generate? What's their average case size? How many clients do they need to make that happen? How many prospects do they need to get a presentation? How many presentations do they need to get a client? So we, we, we back into the metrics of it. And then from there, we come up with what we call a marketing acceleration plan. Okay, how can we get more people into the pipeline? And one of those ways is going to be through seminars and webinars, you know, and we'll, we'll point them to you guys. And the other area, we, we actually have about 88 different ways that an advisor can get a prospect. And so based upon their wiring, we find out, okay, of these 88, what's 10 or 12 things that you're willing to put into your practice to be able to do. And so as an example, I just recently had one advisor that was doing, doing well, they're primarily in the 401k market, but they, with the pandemic and everything, they were not able to get out and do their dog and pony shows like they like to in the beginning. And so we had to get this person all ramped up with 
technology and they their company didn't necessarily lend itself to being conducive to that on the compliance side they were a little more strict on some things in the beginning but once we could kind of help them you know coach them on what to tell compliance and how to to work through it they they got the go ahead for a lot of this stuff and so now we've helped them create online questionnaires, different programs, presentations, things of that nature to now where it's just kind of this clockwork that they can go into an organization and uh, do these presentations and get people to sign up quicker, sooner rather than later. And they basically, they're at about, I mean, they've, they've actually, they've doubled their practice since last year, just by doing, finding their way through technology. And, and we're not technology experts, right? We, we, we point people in that direction, but we can identify what needs to, to be in place. Well, I think almost the first thing that you said was so important. The first thing that you look at with an advisor that you're, you're working with is you go back 90 days and look at their calendar and you look at activities. And I think that that's something that businesses, business owners, salespeople always well, you know what? They just don't put enough effort into doing that. They look, they look for results, but they're not looking for the activities that generate the opportunities that exist in those results. I mean, we have a pretty good sales team here, you know, 20 to 30 individuals on, on different levels. And it's all about activities. It's all about talk time. How many phone calls did you make? How many advisors did you connect to? How many people did you have a real conversation with? And getting that focus down to the, your activity level will generate your, your goals. That's, what's going to get you there. You can't dictate how many opportunities you actually get. You can't dictate if someone's going to buy for you or not. All you can do is wake up every morning and say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do X today because I know this activity will lead to generating revenue. And one thing, and I don't know if you've come across this or not, but about half of the advisors I talk to have a very poor system when it comes to reporting, when it comes to tracking data, when it comes to understanding where their revenue is actually coming from. Yeah, I I would agree with that, Brad. I might even go even the, the, the number might even be higher with regards to the people that don't do a good job of tracking. And there's a reason for that. And, and one of the things that we, because we're salespeople and it's boring and we hate well, it. Well, it's, it's not so much that it's, it's, it's just, it, that's how I feel. Well, did it, did it come out? That's how <laughs> but it, it comes back to how, how we're wired, what our tendencies are, what our biases are, what our strengths. So there's people that are, you know, for guys like you and me who are very uh, relationship oriented, you know, there, there's a strong empathy level of how we view the world. And there's also a very pragmatic way that we see the world. We may not be that systemic in our nature. And if a, somebody is not systemic in their nature, trying to get them to track numbers and input numbers is it's a lost cause. It, it just won't happen. So they either have to find somebody that can extrapolate the information from them verbally, let's say, and then type that into the system. But, you know, we tell people it's, it, it's a people business and it's a numbers game and you've got to track the numbers. There's just no way around it. And for the people that are not systemic, they make up a story that, oh, the numbers don't matter. You know, my business is different and they just don't track the numbers and it's, it's keeping them from being the six, you know, much more successful than they can be. So once they find out how they can get the numbers and work with the numbers and get the reports that speak to them or speak to their brain so that they can activate it, it makes all the difference in the world. I'm a hundred percent borrowing, stealing, using that phrase. It's a people business, but a numbers game. I mean, that, that sums it up right there. That's awesome. You should probably go out there and put that on a t-shirt or something. That'd be great. And, and I think you, you've hit on so many great points today. Um, I thank you for being on the show. If we have one final, one final message to the advisors listening today, you know, we talked a lot about activities. We talked mostly about mindset, which is very interesting. If you had one one tip for the advisors today of, you know, how do you get your mind right? 
actually that's a, a phrase my my trainer who I both love and hate yells at me all the time at the gym is get your mind right. You know, before you get into anything like this, he says, get your mind right. And I love that. He needs a t-shirt too, but you know, what, what would that be of, okay, you know what? I do realize I'm at this plateau, you know, how do I take that next step to, to move forward? You know, I love what your trainer says, and, and there's an acronym that we have. It's called the GYM, G Y M, which is guide your mind. So look at what you're trying to accomplish. If you're seeing some areas that you're stuck, it's based upon a choice given your thoughts, ideas, and beliefs. So you have to have a way or a, a process of being able to be aware of what the, your thinking is. And then you can reframe the thinking. You can calibrate the thinking. That's what we do all day long with our clients. So it's really just noticing what your choices are. You know, like you said, you wake up in the morning, you're, you know, you got plenty of uh, caffeine in your blood system and you're ready to go. And it comes time to picking up the phone and making the calls and you find all these other distractions. Notice the distractions. The first part of change is you have to be aware and then from that awareness, you've got to then select what's the attitude or the approach or the angle that I need to come at this with, right? That's that level 10 wisdom I was talking about earlier. And then most importantly, you need to anticipate. And if you look at the word anticipate, the first three words are ant, right? Which make up automatic negative thoughts. So notice the thinking that's holding you back, what you're telling yourself as to why you're choosing to do something else than what your wise self knows you need to be doing. And then what's in your tool belt around that. So have some action items at the ready, whether it's affirmations or a post-it note or an accountability buddy or a coach or whatever it might be. And then from there, when you do catch yourself doing something good, acknowledge it, celebrate it. And it's always a combination of celebrating and calibrating, and then you can hold yourself accountable. So the, the first part is just awareness just start being aware of what you're telling yourself when you're coming to that decision point and you're not getting done what you want to get done. I love it. Perfectly said. Thank you so much for being on today. And I'm sure we will uh, bring you back on later. This was great. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. Machen McDonald with Brad Swinehart, your host of Be Advised, Leading with Value. Follow Brad's podcast to get the latest show and let your friends know you're thinking of them by sharing. This podcast is brought to you by White Gloves Podcast Connect Program, a done-for-you, fully integrated podcasting system that will help you keep in touch with all of your leads. Thank you for listening to Be Advised, Leading with Value with Brad Swinehart. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of White Glove. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. 